Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's big news, Microsoft's patch Tuesday, we got patches for a total of 74 different vulnerabilities with 21 of the vulnerabilities being labeled as critical. Now, as common in recent patch Tuesdays, there is a strong concentration of these critical vulnerabilities in the scripting engine. So again, these are remote code execution vulnerabilities for the most part that could be executed via the web browser. But in addition, we got a couple other interesting and noteworthy bulletins and patches. First of all, the Microsoft Exchange privilege escalation issue that has been sort of now wrapped into Patch Tuesday, but no real new information here. Then we also have a vulnerability against the DHCP server. Now, last month we had a critical vulnerability against the DHCP client. This time it's the server, which of course, well, it's a little bit more tricky because if someone exploits your DHCP server, they have quite a bit of access to the remainder of your network. On the other hand, DHCP servers aren't really ever exposed to the outside because that typically would tend to break things. Microsoft, on the other hand, considers exploitation and the availability of an exploit for this issue to be less likely. Now, there also is a remote code execution vulnerability in SharePoint, and SharePoint is often exposed externally. However, to exploit this vulnerability, someone has to upload a SharePoint application package. So so again, they need to authenticate for that. And uh, I don't really consider this a huge immediate threat, but certainly something that you should probably patch. And Adobe is returning with its normal monthly patches as well. We do have a patch for Flash Player. This one actually fixes only one single information disclosure vulnerability. More interesting is actually the update for Adobe Acrobat and Reader. This update addresses more than 70 different vulnerabilities. So about the same number of vulnerabilities that we had across all the different Microsoft updates in one single Adobe product, many of these vulnerabilities are rated as critical and could lead to arbitrary code execution. Also interesting, for those of you running Cold Fusion, there is a deserialization of untrusted data vulnerability that's being addressed in today's update. Now, this class of vulnerabilities has become really a big deal in the last couple of years. Remember all the issues with web logic and the like. So certainly something that you need to address. The second vulnerability being fixed here is a cross-site scripting issue. And finally, Adobe is fixing a problem with its creative cloud applications. Now that's the desktop version of it, of course. And the single vulnerability being fixed here is an insecure library loading. That's one of those DLL hijacking vulnerabilities when an attacker can trick you into loading a malicious DLL by placing it in the right directory. So these applications pick it up as they are started. So as far as Adobe goes, definitely expedite the Adobe Acrobat reader update. That's something that's pretty much as important, but more important than most of the Windows patches being released. And if you are running Cold Fusion, yes, you know, certainly apply the update because these deserialization mobiles, once people know how they work in this particular case, they tend to be relatively easy to exploit. But well, it's not just Windows users that need to patch their system. We also have a critical Ubuntu purge escalation vulnerability in the Snap daemon. Snap is a relatively new packaging format that was developed uh, for Ubuntu. And essentially what it does is you can download from a Snap store these binary packages. And then you have this system D daemon Snap D that will do the installation for you and of course software that needs to do installation of other software needs to run as root. The problem here is that
that SnapD exposes an HTTP API that turned out to be vulnerable. Exploitation is trivial, so you should definitely patch it and patches are available. This only as far as I know affects Ubuntu because I believe they're the only distribution that so far has embraced Snap. Well, that is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.